Welcome to Super User TV. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what you do? Yeah, uh, my name is Shane Dunn. I work for IBM. I'm in charge of the cloud platform compliance group, um, focused on compliance and regulatory issues for the IBM cloud. Uh, hi, and uh, my name is Evgenia Schumacher. I work for Mirantis, and uh, I work with um, all sorts of technologies partners Mirantis OpenStack is uh, working with. Uh, okay, so uh, tell me something. When we say compliance, what is it we really mean in this case? Well, so a lot of people, when they think about compliance, right off the bat, it's like, oh, there's all these requirements they have to go implement, and then that drives controls, but really it's, it's about Data, data integrity and conformity around around the data, and a business driver. So, what is it? Is it a, is hygiene that's that's helping um, curate the technology that you go forward with with security implementations? And so, um, compliance is uh, is a necessary evil. There's a cross blend between security and compliance. Um, security is the way to implement it and get it done and make sure it's you know it's constantly um, part of your ecosystem. The compliance is a measurement of that. A point in time that says, yes, I've met a certain regulatory um, area. What do, you, what do you think about that? Well, I actually liked when you mentioned uh, this word like hygiene, and I think that's a very important thing. It's uh, compliance, like in, in my opinion, is, uh, is something that comes from outside, right? So it's like a regulatory authority that uh, helps different types of companies to follow the same standards. So actually, uh, everybody know that uh, the, like in this particular business area, people like follow the same rules and like, like the level of hygiene is, is, is the same, right? Which is, uh, and as you said, it's, a, it's an, like evil, but at the same time it's good, especially for people who consume not for people who build business, but for people who use those services and things like that. Yeah, and I mean, one quick point to add on that is that um, it sets the best practices kind of table for um, your, you know, basically setting the risk, um, you know, exposure or risk around your, your environment. So um, compliance is, is on everybody's mind right now. Okay. So, well, in, in terms of you saying that it's on everybody's mind right now. Who specifically worries about compliance? Who is who needs to worry about it? Uh, I would say, and not to just blanket it, but everybody, everybody's concerned about compliance. Not just industry-specific sectors like healthcare or you know retail um, for card processing with PCI DSS certification. Everybody's worried about it. Up to top, CTO, CISO offices. Um, you know, the engineer, the dev guy on, uh, who's implementing the standard, it's on everybody's mind. Um, and it's all about data, you know, um, integrity and availability, um, confidentiality around the data. So it's important to everybody. Okay. So um, how, does, how does OpenStack help with compliance? What, what's the relationship? I wouldn't say it helps or it like doesn't help. It's more about like we should consider compliance, right? So all those standards, compliance standards, they uh, they are not OpenStack specific and they are not like any type of application specific. They are more specific for a particular like business area or a particular like business use case. And it doesn't matter which type of technology uh, a particular company is using. So we see a trend that a lot of companies go virtual, they go to clouds and they uh, they use OpenStack as a as a their choice of cloud operating system. And in this case, um, what we see is that we need to apply somehow those standards to OpenStack uh, reality, to OpenStack, um, um, I would say like terminology saying like, hey, like, like if PCI DSS, for example, it's pretty, uh, it's a very bad uh, standard, right? It has some really uh, high level, um, moments that tell you like do this and don't do that but in OpenStack we should translate it to that and in some cases 
yes, moving to the cloud, it helps somehow. So we say, hey, we don't need to think about it anymore because that's we are compliant here by default. But in some cases, we at, in OpenStack, we still have to address some of the, some of the issues or be very smart when we build OpenStack clouds. But again, um, as I mentioned, like it's very important to think not about OpenStack, but yeah, other right, and the clouds. whole stack of the offering from infrastructure all the way up through the SaaS consumption model. I mean, OpenStack is a means to the end. It's not. It's not the the stop, right? So OpenStack is when you look at it from the elements of of a compliance, it helps implement the controls, or you know the requirements around the controls to meet. Um, the attestation around a compliance effort, but it's not a compliance in itself. So it's the framework, as you will, from an in, from an infrastructure as a service, to get to the means to the end for compliance. So, yeah. so what is uh, so? Is there anything new in in the world of OpenStack when it comes to compliance issues? There's uh, so you know getting back to being that there's elements there that drive compliance and and all the controls around that. There's a lot of great developments that are happening inside of OpenStack right now to help us get to that next level to say like, okay, we're not compromising our cloud, we're holding the integrity of the security and the quality the same as any other, you know, say VMware-based cloud. And part of those in particular would be, you know, examples around, um, you know, Congress and having, you know, putting policies in place that you can, you can, you can uh, manage to. Uh, open attestation is another one around, you know, verifying the integrity of your bare metal solution against NIST standards for STIGs. I mean, these are all really important projects inside OpenStack that will help us get to, when you do this measurement like CSA, when you do a measurement across um, gaps of different compliance, they all are uh, very similar in nature of what the requirements are. And so, um, you know, having a solution to meet one of those and then take that across the line to meet the rest of the compliance is really important. Yeah, what I really like about OpenStack, it's like it's an open ecosystem, so anyone can bring something new there. And now we see a lot of traction around compliance simply because we see that people are more interested in compliance and users who, who adopt OpenStack, they're not more like um, POC type of users. They really want to use it in production, so they think about compliance and Seeing those gaps, we start implementing different types, creating different types of new projects inside of OpenStack ecosystem. And I would add, so there are some like like really compliance related projects, and there is something like um, on a level like down. For example, I would say Bandit. It's a framework that checks the quality of the code, which is another very important topic because we're using up, uh, OpenStack as an application and it's very important to, to know that this application has uh, ha doesn't have any vulnerabilities. Because it will have vulnerabilities, but at least you ha can track those somehow. So that's a very good trend, lots of activities around that. So I, I, was, I was wondering if there have been any surprises in the last 6 to 12 months. Would you consider that to be a surprise, or are there other things? Um, you know, when I, when I think of surprises, is like, was there something that we didn't expect? Um, I, you know, OpenStack is a very well-planned, methodical process of what we're going to do from stage to stage, and looking out, and when we think about Mataka, um, you know, some of the, the surprises, if you will, that jumped out, I think, are around, like, um, Barbican for key management, how, you know, that's been integrated well with, with uh, Keystone, and how Keystone's been able to make improvements around identity management. Um, though that's not necessarily surprises, but they're, they're, they're necessary movements around maturing OpenStack. Um, and so then we can all consume this with enter, you know, enterprise workloads that uh, everybody expects. I agree uh, that, okay. yes, OpenStack itself is very well planned. Well planned and OpenStack users, they all know the OpenStack roadmap, so it's not a big surprise for them what OpenStack can do and can't do. But as I mentioned before, like the whole um, OpenStack adoption moves forward and we see a lot of production deployments, like really big production deployments, and of course there is more demand for compliance. So um, from um, perspective, like from uh, working with partners and customers, I would say that we see more and more requirements from them, and actually um, the way we plan uh, as a company uh, in the to 
like move forward the security uh, track. We're actually uh, looking for part different types of partners to uh, build a like build a joint solutions that will be compliant with particular standards. Not only OpenStack, but other types of technologies that we can integrate. And OpenStack is a great is a great thing to do that because of its nature. So, so what do stakeholders and OpenStack developers need to know about compliance? Uh, first, I mean, from a stakeholder, um, it's it's all about shared compliance. You know, nobody owns any one particular thing, and that includes with you know getting back to the, the model of OpenStack is is the means to an end. So, as a stakeholder, I look at it as the end customer, the user that's consuming it, and you know, OpenStack will help enable compliance, but there's still a lot of tooling and there's a lot of business practices that go around that to really claim you know, compliance around that. I think first is you know, focus on the security as a foundation to the, to the core of your, uh, your enterprise or your offering, and compliance will come from that, right? As a result, compliance will come from that. Now, you know, getting back to that blend, security and compliance blend together, um, so that's what I would say from a stakeholder is know where your data is, Yeah. Yes. I, I agree. So yeah. So as you mentioned, like compliance yeah. is a very complicated thing. It's a very, like, um, it's a beast with different faces. And security is a, is one thing. And there are also like some sort of like organizational controls and requirements. And stakeholders need to keep that in mind. And having OpenStack as the part of the solution, it sometimes helps. Some, sometimes sometimes not. But stakeholders need to keep that in mind. And those cloud providers who help them to create OpenStack-based solutions, they need to be aware of that as well. And uh, as you said, as you asked about like what OpenStack developers need to know, first of all, they need to know that compliance exists. So we need to keep educating them. We need to keep, um, uh, provide some sort of like transparency about what, what compliance is, what it actually means, uh, in like and show them how it like maps on some, some sort of like development practices or like deployment practices because for some engineers it's really hard to map some business requirements to like really like technical requirements. That's something we need to focus on now and educate our development community. Yeah, and I would just add to that from a developer side. I think a lot of things don't get called out in security implementation or compliance and like an example would be like when you're implementing something, make sure it fails closed you know, so you're fail safe and something happens that you don't know, open up a port and anybody can just come through. Like general practices like that and just being, being clear on those things. So what do you see as kind of the future of compliance and, and OpenStack? Yeah, that, uh, um, so I guess my mind goes back to what's in flight right now with OpenStack. Like mm -hmm. when you think about the, the RefStack project that's going on, where interop interoperability between different clouds, um, that's going to be a gigantic forcing function on compliance because if you're going to be exchanging data uh, or PHI data across you know, HIPAA clouds, you're going to have to have very, very stringent controls in place and uniformity for a framework that allows you to do that exchange. So ref, uh, you know, the ref stack is a big driver there. I think another big one is um, you know, around uh, the uh, initiatives to, I think it was called uh, OpenStag, and that's an that's a, uh, initiative to, to drive um, automation into the compliance framework. So you're not only measuring, but you're mediating in a real-time basis. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of things, um, you're trying to automate, automate, automate for awareness and be able to measure often um, and be able to remediate. So that's where I think trends are going to be going here. Yeah, I would add more, uh, like just to continue like yeah. the line that I started, like. Um, from the development perspective, we will have more um, users, uh, OpenStack users, who will require like compliance, and that as a like that will drive OpenStack community to focus more on uh, on like hardening security for for each project and like actually adopting best practices to make sure that um, they're compliant with like PCI DSS or FedRAMP or any other like standards. So that's uh, that's the trend I see like. Big companies, they start using OpenStack, they see those gaps, and they push actually like very hard OpenStack community to uh, change in that direction. And those projects are a very good example. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else you want to add? I think we're good. All right. 
Well, great. Thank you both very much. I know you're very busy and uh, have a great summit. Thank well, you. Thank you very much.